Hey, good morning. Do you like my Smitty's beard sauce pullover? Isn't that nice? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, thought I'd model it for, uh, for Smitty. Show it around, not bad. But I'm also gonna give you a class in what's called concealment. Oh yeah, and you can conceal a 45. Did you know that? Yeah, man, the way it was concealed, you didn't even see it. Unless you're paying attention, it's right there, okay? And there again is my holster from Simply Rugged Holsters in Arizona. And there is the matching for extra firepower. So for those of you who think you can't conceal a full-size 1911, actually a tactical, which is even bigger, well, there you go. See? Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. Ta-da! Nope, not too much. No printing, but still available for pull and... And by the way, if you're practicing your draw, which everybody should be doing just as much as you're doing your dry firing, you should also be doing your draw. You know, how do you draw? Because when you actually need the thing, are you going to be fumbling around trying to, oh, what is here? Where, where was it? Oh, oh, but you got to remember to pull out properly. Or oh, you could be in big trouble. So, anyway... I'm finished with my practice. I'm going to load this. Now it's hot. And we're gonna have a little conversation. And it's more than appropriate that I talked about concealment. Because what is it about concealment? That's one of the biggest, biggest tools of your average psychopath. So, let's go through the list of psychopaths we know publicly. John Wayne Gacy, uh, Ted Bundy, uh, Adolf Hitler. So, what are psychopaths? And would you be surprised at how many you've probably crossed within a week and you don't even know? Now, it's one thing if you're just peripheral to their, their reality, but if you happen to be in their line of fire, oh yeah, that could get real interesting. So, in my situation, I got in the line of fire of somebody who I definitely, in my honest opinion, and from the information and research and facts that I found out about this guy, Jeremy Whalen and his brother, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, I would definitely consider them psychopaths because one of the indicators of psychopaths is they become cyber stalkers and stalkers and cyber harassers. And you become like this focal point for them. It's very interesting. But you know, in the DSM, where you want to be very politically correct, they don't call psychopaths psychopaths. It's only until you get into law enforcement in, in the intelligence business that psychopath actually starts popping up. Like back in the day, the psychopaths we were dealing with were building car bombs and blowing up, you know, men, women, and children, civilians, in the streets of Honduras, El Salvador. Yeah, these guys. Guys you really want to put away or put under. Nowadays, <clears throat> they get into various positions of power. They get into jobs in the same company you're working at. And sometimes you get unlucky and you find yourself in a relationship with a psychopath. And oh, you know, I, yeah, like I tell you, my psychology interests, they, they go very, very deep. So there's a book that I had been uh, very intrigued by, which is called The Sociopath Next Door. Came back, came out a few years ago. But here's a definition according to the author. Imagine, if you can not having a conscience, none at all, no feelings of guilt or remorse, no matter what you do, no limiting sense, sense of concern for the well-being of strangers, friends, or even family members. Imagine no struggles with shame, not a single one in your whole life, no matter what kind of selfish, lazy, harmful, or immoral action you had taken, and pretend that the concept of responsibility is unknown to you, except as a burden others seem to accept without question. Like gullible fools. Yeah, that's what psychopaths think of everybody else except themselves. 
Now add to this strange fantasy the ability to conceal from other people that your psychological makeup is radically different from theirs. Since everyone simply assumes that conscience is a universal among human beings. I mean, don't we all have consciences? Evidently not. <clears throat> Hiding the fact that you are conscience-free is nearly effortless for these people. You are not held back from any of your desires by guilt or shame, and you are never confronted by others for your cold-bloodedness. The ice water in your veins is so bizarre, so completely outside of their personal experience that they seldom even guess at your condition. In other words, you are completely free of internal restraints and your unhampered liberty to do just as you please with no pangs of conscience, is conveniently invisible to the world. You can do anything at all, and still your strange advantage over the majority of people who are kept in line by their consciences will most likely remain undiscovered. Isn't that wild? I mean, that's the opening of this book by Martha Stout, called The Sociopath Next Door. And there are other books that I highly, highly recommend, such as Without Conscience, the Disturbing World of the Psychopath. And here's another interesting definition of a psychopath. Psychopaths are social predators who charm, manipulate, and ruthlessly plow their way through life, leaving a broad trail of broken hearts, shattered expectations, and empty wallets, completely lacking in conscience and in feelings for others. They selfishly take what they want and do as they please, violating social norms, and expectations without the slightest sense of guilt or regret. And it's amazing, amazing, how many people in Hollywood exhibit these types of traits. If you work in Hollywood, you are very well of these people and how they move and how they act. Some of them, eh, they're not dangerous, like uh, they're not psychopathic killers, you know, like Bundy or John Wayne Gacy. But that's the question is, how far is a person willing to go? And, oh, another book, definitely worth reading. Joe Navarro. Everything by Joe Navarro about, uh, about psychopaths is straight up. And if you don't know who Joe Navarro is, Joe Navarro is, uh, uh, he was a, an FBI, uh, he's a former FBI agent, and he wrote a bunch of great books. Uh, one is How to Spot a Psychopath. And then the other one, very good reading, is uh, um, Dangerous Personalities. An FBI profiler shows you how to... Oh, let's get back to the page on here. <clears throat> Joe Navarro's book is uh, Dangerous Personalities. An FBI profiler shows you how to identify and protect yourself from harmful people. Again, by Joe Navarro. FBI special agent retired, and he wrote it with Tony Sciarra Pointer. Excellent, excellent book. That's it right there. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good book. Now, <clears throat> the psychology of a psychopath is very interesting because I come from the belief that Nothing happens in a vacuum. And having my experience with Jeremy Whalen on set when he attacked me, and sucker punched me, you would never really gotten it unless you're paying attention to the subtleties. I mean, if you're trained in micro expressions, you pick up on those things. And those are the ones that actually I was picking up on. So that's why he and I never really got close. But I didn't know how far back in there with some dark, dark stuff. And it goes back all the way to childhood. So in the book, I talk about how he mentions that uh, when he was a kid, he would walk up the streams in the, was it, uh, Snow uh, Snohomish area, and cut salmon in half when they were spawning with a machete that his father had given to him as a gift, I guess on one of his father's trips down to Latin America. And by this time, he's becoming a very, very angry child, from what I can understand, because of what his father had done. And that's where this sick and twisted, freaking nightmare that I found myself in, in Brazil and Argentina, 
really has its core where it starts up. And remember, this is the thing. That's why you want good parents. You want parents to take care of themselves, get themselves squared away first, then raise kids, okay? But if you're not squared away and you yourself happen to be a predator, you know, and that's what a psychopath is. A psychopath is a predator. Psychopaths act like predators. They act just like a mountain lion. When a mountain lion focuses on that buck, and he knows he's got that buck totally lined up. And there's no interference from the does. That's actually one of the reasons that the buck population in California has gone down. is because the mountain lion population has just exploded. There's no control over them. And as a result, that's the reason you have them coming into cities. They don't want to go into the cities. But they're competing with each other because they're overpopulated. But you don't get that from the uh, politically correct uh, news on... Uh, the environment and ecology you used to when actually people would listen to biologists but they don't listen to biologists anymore they just go off of touchy-feely things and people writing fantastic false propaganda but anyway so <clears throat> just like a mountain lion that's got that buck all by itself because you know he doesn't have to deal with all these many eyes and ears from does that like to herd together bucks like to get off on their own and and have a you know high vantage point where they can smell any predator coming up, and also they can see better. But they're left alone, so that makes them a perfect target for the mountain lion who's stalking them. And just like a psychopath, aka a predator, <clears throat> once that predator has got you dialed in, he comes straight in. And in my honest opinion, what had happened was Jeremy, because of the ego of a psychopath thinks that everything is his. He has no regard for anybody else in his life. He just goes after what he thinks he's due. And it's just like his brother, because these two guys, they work together. And it's interesting. It's just like when two predators work together. They come in, they size up a herd, and then they start working like a couple wolves. They start coming in, and they try to chop up the, the herd and divide, and then they come in and they make their kills, okay? And that's the way... Jeremy and his brother have been trying to work against me. And in the lawsuit, it says, oh, since second season that they were initiating. No, it goes further, further back than that. It goes all the way to the release of the first episode of Treasure Quest Snake Island in Brazil. Yes, because by that time, Jeremy had begun recruiting and working with his brother because his brother supposedly is this technological wizard. Yeah, I think he fucking failed that class. Especially when you come up against somebody with my background. So, I invite you. Go over to my Wikipedia page. Go and check out uh, uh, ISB, uh, not ISB, uh, IP addresses that uh, show the damning, and I mean damning, credit that go all the way back to Jeremy and his brother's LLC. Oh! Yeah, they kind of screwed on that one, huh? Yeah. So, yeah, the, uh, what's it, the DA from, uh, from Ferry County and King County in Washington State? Yeah, I think we're going to have some more talks. Oh, okay. Yeah, libel, libelous statements. Oh, yeah, Wikipedia libelous statements by James and Jeremy Whalen. So they actually had the audacity to go over to my Wikipedia page, not realizing how easily I could track them back, even when they were playing the little games. But yeah, so this is what they actually had the audacity to write, is, uh, yeah, Vietnam uh, is an American author of novels and adventures, a former, see, originally it said combat photographer and then imprisoned for illegal entry into the country, which is accurate. But then, Jeremy and... James, A.K. See, now that's the other thing too. James Whalen, yeah, his other name is Kendall D. McKibben, and why is that? Oh, yeah, it goes all the way back to his childhood angst. Hmm. And if I had a father like that, yeah, in my honest opinion, I might have freaking turned out like that. But thank God I had good parents, and not only that, somebody set me straight on the times that I was going on the wrong road. But evidently, these guys didn't get it. So instead, they wrote, 
he is a former child photographer, uh, yeah, who was in prison for illegal photography via photographing children by supposedly looking for buried treasure. How fucked up is that? Yeah. So, if some guy in law enforcement in a foreign country like Cambodia or uh, Latin America, oh yeah, Latin America, places where Jeremy's like hiding out in. Hmm, why is he hiding out in Latin America, in Ecuador, Peru? Hmm, yeah. If I was in law enforcement in Ecuador, I'd be stopping by and saying, uh, Jeremy, there's some indications based on your family background that you might be a predator and your actions that you're a predator. We've got confirmation that you're a drug smuggler and we got confirmation that you're an artifact smuggler. So, and your dad got busted for what? Molesting your sister back in the early 80s. Oh, I've got that arrest report in here too. Yeah. It's kind of fucked up, huh? Kind of sick. When I read the arrest report, you might be, you might have to get ready to go and take a shower because. When I read you this one, oh yeah, this is, yeah, this is, uh, the defendant, Myron Thomas Whalen, is the father of, yeah, the victim, was born and then lives with her parents in Snoqualmie, King County, Washington, in October 1982, went into her parents' bedroom to sleep during an evening thunderstorm in the morning, awoke to find out the defendant's hand on her breast and under her clothes. Got up and read the room and left the room. On October 27th, 1982, got up early in the morning. That's the part I'm going to leave to you to read. It's in the book. The full freaking arrest record is the back of the book. And in my honest opinion, based on what I heard Jeremy tell me about his father and what his father had told him that I actually have in the book here, uh... Ferry County, Washington, and King County, Washington, you might have to uh, go and check your records. Oh, and by the way, he doesn't come up under Megan's Law, because remember, this arrest was in 1982. So that was before Megan's Law, and that's the reason that he doesn't pop up. Oh, and see, here's some more of that crap. See that right there? Yeah, that's the harassment and following up by... James Whalen, a.k.a. Kendall D. McKibben, putting up his own little Amazon pages trying to uh, defame me, trying to harass me, trying to get my, my book sales down. Yeah, Bamboo Chest, second edition, one star. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's trying to do. See, that's what I've been dealing with. I've been dealing with quietly. Because you know what? What I learned a long time... Oh, Oh, yeah, and that's where he got tried to get Don Shipley from, uh, what's that, uh, uh, yeah, the Stolen Valor thing, but he's for the Navy SEALs. Yeah, so <laughs> he's imitating Don Shipley. Dude, don't imitate Navy SEALs. It doesn't turn out well. Yeah, especially when your IP address is 204.106.238.248. Yeah, Don Shipley doesn't reside in Washington State. I know where he lives. I have his direct email address. Yeah. I'll leave that up to you two to uh, resolve. <laughs> oh, by the way. Yeah, if you're going to type up uh, Don Shipley's name, spell it right. It's not Don Shilpy at Hotmail.com, which is not his email address either. <laughs> These are the antics of fucking two little kids, man. Who are trying to play in a big boy's world. And they're fucked up in the head. Okay? That's when I get pissed off. If you got your freaking own family issues and you want to deal with them, we all got family issues, man. That's the thing about it. That's the difference between a child and an adult. An adult takes care of his or her own problems and moves forward. Okay? I've got... Shoot. If you did not read Map Bamboo Chest, you got to realize... I had some major issues from having been raised in Vietnam during the war. You know, like I had visual memories of things that adults have problems with seeing. You know, like a freaking war going on. Yeah. Which is kind of weird because it kind of like set me up for 
when I did go to war on my own because it's like, hey, psh, this isn't that strange. It just kind of screwed up because it should be strange if you're raised in a nice, pleasant, you know, leave it to beaver type of uh, uh, childhood. Yeah, didn't have that one. But I did my work. And because of that, I've achieved the things that I've achieved in my life. I've had the experience that I've experienced in my life. I didn't make myself a victim to all these other things. Oh, and see, this is the best part. I will be putting these photographs up for you to see directly. See those photographs right there? Those are the ones that the state of Washington should automatically, the public defender, okay, not public defender, actually the DA, should be getting warrants out for Jeremy and James Whalen. And, yes, getting restraining orders on them. But I will qualify that because I learned about restraining orders. And that's the reason I get really pissed off when somebody wants to take away my Second Amendment rights. Because I'd say about 80% of the time, a restraining order ain't worth shit. Because the psycho who really needs a restraining order, it's not going to stop him. That 45 I'm carrying, yeah, that is a restraining order. If you physically attempt to threaten me, put my life in danger, or put those of my loved ones in danger, I'll remove you. I am allowed by law, as it is now, thank God. But think about that. Are you going to run to the door to your ex-husband, who's like right out there and you're a woman, and you've got your restraining order and said, you're not supposed to show up within 300 feet of me. And he really does need a restraining order? Do you think that's going to stop him? Nah. Because right about half sentence, he's probably kicking that door down, and he's either got his hands to your throat, or he's pulled out his own gun that if he actually is a criminal already, first of all, he's not supposed to have that gun. But you know, if he's a criminal like that, he's already got one because he doesn't care. And he's going to use it. And that's the reason everybody should be fighting for the Second Amendment. Because that is your last opportunity to make sure that you can actually even up the table against some psycho who is coming after you. So right here, yeah, th those photographs right there, those were taken when, ah, yes, I was going to a celebrity hunt in, uh, was that the one in Oklahoma? Yeah, I was going to a celebrity hunt in Oklahoma. In Enid, Oklahoma. It's one of the, it's a phenomenal hunt, and it's, it's uh, pro-conservation, and uh, the funds and everything go towards uh, the uh, Oklahoma Fish and game protection of the, of the Bob White quail, which of course is, for for various reasons, has been going down in population. But these photographs, and I will put up the postings of those for you. These were taken by Jeremy and James, actually by Jamie. Jaime, he likes to go by Jaime. See, he's like he's always running his name differently. Always wants to hide because when he was farmed out, because that's what happened. He, there we go, oh, he got farmed out, and, oh, we're getting, there we go, he got farmed out when his dad got busted, and went to jail, and basically the whole family got split up, and that's where all this anger comes from, and it's never been resolved, and I met Jamie, I met Jaime, James, Jaime, Kendall, my God, it's getting confusing. When he smuggled the drugs and the artifacts to Argentina. And the amount of anger just oozing off this guy. He was like, it was all focused at me because that's, that's how this works. See, it's a catalyst. You find catalyst. That's the way these, these psychopaths work. Some kind of psychological. It's kind of like, you know, Bundy and Gacy. They go after their victims because there's something in their victim that brings up whatever anger or rage that they have, okay? And so when he saw me at the airport, he decided to take pictures. But this is where he screwed up. 
Because normally when he was sending me emails threatening violence and how he was going to, oh, make me squeal like a pig. Yeah, that's from Deliverance, dude. <laughs> I laughed at that one. That was a good one. But you're one sick fuck. And the thing about it is, patience rewards the patient. Yeah, the rewards come to the patient. And I've been very, very patient with you two. And when you try to threaten me, and you send me photographs, making it look like, ooh, we're tracking you. When it's so damn clear, you were like, oh, God, that's great. It's just, it was, you know, target of opportunity. I'm coming out. A friend of mine's picking me up at SeaTac. And see, that's another screwed up thing, dude. SeaTac, uh, Washington. How far is it from where you live? Yeah. Yeah, I know where you live, man. It's just a question of when the cops are going to actually do their job and show up at your place and go, hey, you've been doing things that are really, really, really against the law. And uh, you shouldn't be saying these things. There are many, many laws against this, but you continue to do this because you think you're hiding behind the veil. And remember what I told you about it? Criminals, they succeed by hiding behind these shadows, okay? That's why, first thing you do when you're going through your house, you got your flashlight, and you got your handgun, and you're going through, and you're looking around, or you got your, what, like a Surefire 300 mounted on your tactical rail, and you're just going ready, and you light up every corner, because if you see a pair of eyes looking back at you, and there seems to be a weapon in his hand, or her hand, you let loose. And you know what I like about 45s? You can shoot through walls with it. Actually, you can shoot through walls with a 9mm too. That's one of the reasons they actually stopped using the MP5. Do you know that? Yeah. MP5 used to be like the CQB, close quarter, you know, entering weapon. Now they went back to the M4, carbine M M16, you know, the Car 15. Why? Because that ran goes so fast that... And it's small enough, it'll do all its damage, but it doesn't keep on going through all these walls. And that's the reason it's being used now, when it wasn't before. I mean, God, the MP5, man, HK. Because those 9 millimeters, they just keep on going, especially if they're FMJs, you know. But that's the thing about it. What is it about it at Discovery that they, f they hire, remember Wolves Pack Together? Why is it that they keep on hiring all these people who either have records or are soon going to have records? And we're not talking about like, oh, well, he got busted for shoplifting when he's 12 years old. No, we're talking he killed three guys in a helicopter because uh, he lied about his background. Oh, yeah, that's the other, uh, in my honest opinion, psychopath. And that's a confirmation. And Michael's already got a solid, well, he's got a restraining order. But evidently, it doesn't stop him from ugh, getting access to weapons, from what I've heard. Because according to the uh, restraining order, he's not supposed to have any type of firearm. And yet, how is he teaching gun classes? Yeah! <sighs> government. Big government. Let me tell you. You're doing your job. Oh, man. Feed the people. <laughs> Yeah, think about that, people. Think about it. Think about how you get all these restraining orders against these psychopaths and against these people who do all these illegal crimes. I mean, they do all these crimes. And they continue to get away with it. And it's kind of like, they kinda, they're like piggybacking. And this is the thing that's going to be very interesting for you to think about. Because... I'm not saying whether this is true or not, but remember what I said about Wolves Pack Together? Well, you got Brett Tudor. He's being protected by Discovery, in my honest opinion. Jeremy Whalen, he's being protected by Discovery. And his brother, too, because of his association with his brother. Now, what's the psychology of David Zaslav? Hmm, I've never met the man. But having met Jeremy and having met James Whalen, a.k.a. Kendall D. McKibben, 
Yeah, flat out. You can look in their eyes. You can tell. You can also see by their actions. You can also see by their micro expressions. You can also see by their body language. It's kind of like, you know, hey, I'm your friend, but I'm not really your friend. You know, it's kind of like, where are the smiles? Is a smile like in a full smile here? Or is it, uh, and see crow's feet? That's actually one of the attractive things about people as you get older is you get crow's feet, which means that you truly smile. You know, it's like, hey, it's compared to like, that's not a real smile. That's just, but it's not coming into the eyes. And when somebody smiles like that with you, what are they trying to sell you? And that's the thing about it is that psychopaths, when you look at a psychopath, there's actually like a dimness. It's kind of funny. It's like that stereotype in Hollywood, like, oh my God, he's got the thousand yard stare. Like, like somehow that means he's killed a lot of people, man. You know, he's been in the norm. He's been like, he's been like deep in the jungle. You know, he's been like, he's been like, ah, take him out because he's a, a super sniper. Yeah, sniper. Yeah, he's been killing men and, well, women and children. Oh yeah, that's uh, another uh, reality TV star that uh, we'll be talking about him pretty soon. Oh, it just keeps on going, doesn't it? I'm just like, I can't take it anymore, Captain. I just can't take it anymore. I just want to go back to India. You know, it's so peaceful over there. But here I am, freaking dealing with two psychopaths who think they're so smart and intelligent because they are uh, they had the opportunity to go and try to like uh, slam me on Amazon and try to, to drop my book sales. And then they've gone over to uh, Wikipedia and try to screw with me over there. And then uh, try to go over to like Stolen Valor and try to get me over there. And it's like, it ain't working, is it? Yeah, that's because you guys are coming from a bullshit trail. And when you come from a bullshit trail and you got a bullshit background, you kind of stumble all, your, all over yourself trying to get things done. And that's why Jeremy's freaking still hiding out in Ecuador. Because if he comes back to the States, He's on the radar. And when you come on the radar with different agencies and departments, that ain't good. Now, according to Jeremy, my background, because he was always talking badly about me on, on set, you know, like, oh, you don't believe that shit about, about, about Cork's background, do you? No. No, no, he couldn't have done that. Shit, think about it. How old was he when he was doing this? How old was he when he was doing that? Yeah. That's the thing about it. When you rely on that freaking information and you place your actions based on that, are you really ready to deal with the repercussions of that? Which is to say that then I would have contacts in different parts of the government. I wouldn't have contacts in different departments of law enforcement, both national and international, and you have nothing to worry about, right? Cool. So, on that note, let's talk further about the actual psychology of a psychopath and how best to deal with a psychopath. Because I can guarantee you've already dealt with them. Worst one is if you've got one as a boss. And remember what I said about, like, you know, I'm not saying this is a fact, but, and I've never met David Zaslav, but based on his actions and the way he tries to present himself to the public, versus the actions that he actually does whew, under the veil. In my honest opinion, those would indicate someone who has a predatory psychopathic psychology. And that would be, that'd be someone like we had described at the beginning of that book by uh, Mary Stout, which is someone who really doesn't give a damn about society or people or morals. They have their own viewpoint of the world and they're limited in that point of view and they will do anything they can in order to achieve that. For instance, continue to bring wealth to a major corporation at the cost of truth, at the cost of defrauding an audience. And these are big questions to ask yourself. It's kind of funny that, you know, if you actually do like a, uh, a profile, and that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about profiles. And people have certain profiles. I mean, there's, uh, I mean, think about it. You have your own profile. You profile people like when you're dating. You profile people that you're going to actually go work with. Do you want to work with someone? How do they interact with you? 
There's another one, oh, The Gift of Fear. That is another phenomenal book. If you haven't read that one, I would highly, highly, highly suggest getting a copy of The Gift of Fear. Because I fine-tuned my skills when I was in Latin America and Central America during the war. Okay, I fine-tuned them, and evident of that, I'm still alive to talk to you about that experience or parts of those experiences in my life. Because I paid attention to them in situations where if I didn't pay attention to them, uh, one time I could have had a bullet in the back of my head, another one I could have gotten stabbed, another one I could have gotten blown up. But uh, Gift of Fear, and then the other one's really good, is actually uh, Left of Bang. That's actually a phenomenal. That's where a, a, a Marine, you know, Marines really like to fine-tune and, and get to the bottom of things, which I like. Uh, and, you know, my dad was a Marine, so I totally get that. And I was raised like a Marine by my dad. So if you're a Marine and you raise kids, you know how. You know, and if your dad was a Marine, you know what I'm talking about. So um, that left of bang, that gift of fear, pay attention to it. Because in my situation, I didn't pay attention to it. I didn't pay attention to it when I was being recruited to be on Treasure Quest. And so things, because I was like, oh man, you know, this could be great. I get on a TV show, I'm going to sell books. Oh, and by the way, if you're a writer, would you like to know how many books I sold through the whole time? This is very interesting. I've talked about this before, which is that people who listen to radio, they're more likely to buy books. People who watch TV, no, nah, not so much. I think I sold like 10 copies of Bamboo Chest during the whole season of Treasure Coast Snake Island, Brazil. I have sold so many more books just by doing internet marketing and social media and YouTube. So think about that because it's like we're having a conversation. We're talking. You just happen to see me, you know, hey, we're doing a little fireside chat, relaxing. But you are required to listen to what I say and think about it and Create ideas in your mind that fulfill and clarify that for you. If you're watching TV, it's all being spoon-fed to you. You know, it's just like, oh, here, here's another bite. And think about that. God, I keep on thinking about like, wow, who is David Zaslav working with? Because if you look at the background of the people who show up at his parties, the big Shark Week party every year, <whistles> yeah, we'll talk about that next time. Thinking about psychopaths, psycho psychopaths, it's like, you may work for one, doesn't give a damn about you, doesn't give a damn about the idea that you have this issue or that issue that you got to deal with. No, man, it's just like, you get this done. That's not a true leader. That's just a psychopath, okay? So you have to be prepared for dealing with this. And that's why I'm highly suggesting not only picking up my book, because you'll see, because I'm really good at describing psychologies of people just by their actions. Get a copy of So You Want to Be a Reality TV Star. Everything I learned about sex, drugs, fraud, rock and roll, and Vipers as team leader of Discovery Channel's Treasure Quest Snake Island. And I got more pictures I'll be posting. And get a, the gift of fear and get left of bang. It's not just for combat. It's actually for prepping that mind and being aware of variances and paying attention to things that just don't jive together. Like if you're being told one thing and then you get on set and then something else happens... Yeah, that's not kosher. That shouldn't be working like that. Yeah, think about that. And it was repeatedly on set. So, like, oh yeah, we're going to go find treasure. And then it's like everything's scripted. So, on that note, get a copy of The Gift of Fear. Get a copy of, uh, yeah, The Sociopath Next Door. That's a good one. And uh, Without Conscience. That in itself, the title t says everything right there. Okay. That was my co-star Jeremy, Jeremy Whalen, and his brother, who th think they've gotten away with everything, but they've been really silent of late. Oh, yeah. Very silent. But that's the thing. Once you've come out and you got trail, when I get on a trail, I'm a hunter. Okay. There's a psychology in a hunter. And that's actually why, in the old native ways, there's a progression of how someone becomes a holy man, you know, or a, a healer in, in the tribes. And basically, it's hunter, warrior, healer. 
Okay. I'm actually thinking about writing a book based on, on that. So first, you know, on the tribe, you become a hunter and you learn how to hunt and track and all this kind of stuff. Then you become a warrior and then you go off to war. And then you're older and wiser and you become the healer for the tribe. But you can't become the healer unless you first go through the two steps of the hunter and the warrior. Because you need to fight. Like in my business when I was a counselor, you fight for the soul or the mind of the one you're trying to help. And as a hunter, you learn how to track. So you're tracking, trying to find out where did they deviate? What was this incident that caused them to turn their trap to the left or to the right? Why did they pull back? Why did their tracks go this way or that way? And then you can understand where to get them back on track. And that's how you fulfill your duties as a healer. So I'll leave you on that note. And we'll talk tomorrow about further things on Treasure Quest Snake Island. Have a good evening.